Welcome back to Millionaire Insiders. This is part two with Jared Sessler from Home Task. He's been amazing and been teaching us all about financial management, which is something that a lot of entrepreneurs like to ignore. So right now, we talked a little bit the last time, especially towards the end, about getting a PL, a profit and loss sheet. A lot of the times when you're new to business, you don't know about it, or even if you have a good business, we don't tend to look at them probably as much as we should. So I'd love to hear uh, from Jared exactly what he does. So Jared, why don't you sort of go through and just tell us sort of the basics of what a profit and loss statement is and why we need to look at them. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jamie. First of all, I have to admit some guilt because I want to make sure that the viewers are are realizing that I'm in this with you. I uh, own several businesses and really am still struggling in some ways of training myself, teaching myself, disciplining myself to look at the financials and do these things now. I understand a lot more now and have a lot more money to work with now than what I did uh, way back when. But there was a period of time when I first started in business that I didn't even know what a P&L was. I mean, I actually remember thinking I heard someone say it, and I'm like, so is that P and L or is that L? And what the heck does it stand for? And not really knowing how it could be used as a tool for the business or really even used as a tool to understand whether or not you have a business. Um, and those kinds of things. So I, I'm there. And uh, I'll, towards the end of it, I'll tell you how I kind of got my education uh, because I think it's applicable to anybody that's watching and, and something that is really easy to do. But in general, a P&L stands for profit and loss. It is a two-category income statement. Usually it's uh, a format where the income or your profit is at the top. The, the statement profit is a bit of a misnomer because the top section is really income. Um, and then the bottom is is called uh, loss, but it's 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 your expenses. And so all you do is you add up your income and in, and then your expenses. And then the bottom line, you hear everybody talking about how does that impact the bottom line? It's the bottom line of the P and L that everyone's talking about. And so if you have, let's just say that you have five thousand dollars worth of income or profit on the profit side, and then you have six thousand dollars worth of expenses, that means you have a negative bottom line. That means you've lost a thousand dollars. Obviously, that's not the result we want, and that isn't a good business. So that L statement in very, very general brief terms. I love it. And so um, one of the things that I sort of want to talk about, too, and it sort of goes with this, with a lot of people are paying attention to gross revenues, and other people are paying attention to profit margins. And this sort of is along the same lines of your P&L. So I just wanted to jump into that for just a second so you can maybe explain that a little bit too. Yeah, it depends on the stage of the business and the owner. So if the owner has good uh, backing and can infuse the company with uh, cash and to keep it keep it going or to start it up or if you have a, a cash plan that allows you to work through a certain period of time where you don't have to be profitable, then your gross margin isn't important. Uh, what's important is getting the sales, and those those initial sales may cost you more than what uh, you're actually going to produce from them. Um, just like with me, I mean, we own a bunch of uh, different franchise brands that we license locations around the country. When when we originally before that, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars more on the infrastructure than than the first few franchises would have produced for us. And so, uh, so that's an example where we need to be prepared to invest in that company. But in general, beyond the, the initial stages, uh, unless you're going through some major growth uh, opportunity that's going to cost you a lot, but you, you have some measured return from that, you're going to want to focus on, on gross margin. So you're going to want to be able to get to a point where you're looking at, beyond my uh, expenses, how much money is left. That, that's your margin. That's your, that's your net profit. Uh, and you really want to be looking at that. I guess I misspoke there. It's not about... It, it's the terms gross and net can be confusing, but uh, I I use gross margin in the same way as you would use net profit. So it's not gross income; it's not your total income. It's your net income after expenses that you really want to focus on. And what what's really interesting is I'll just throw a quick story. And some companies uh, don't make money, and I see them around the community, and I think other people probably see them too. Where you're you visit some place and you're just like. I have no idea how this place can be making money. I do and that too. Like, wait, I don't get it. <laughs> I own one of those companies and I know other people that own those companies. And so you, there's always these weird circumstances around some company or some affinity to something 
as to why this company exists or w what's going on. But uh, again, it goes back to that, where is the founder or the owner of the company at and what are their motivations and why are they doing it? And so, but for most of us, we need, we need to have our companies make money and, uh, and thankfully most of mine do. We only have one that is on that side. Um, so, so anyway, it's, it's important to understand what these, uh, what these, uh, uh, reports and things will do for you. And it's a tool in your business. Don't be intimidated by it. So I want to ask about another tool, but I need to follow up on this. Why hold a company that you know isn't making any money? Are you planning on it that it will make money in the future or is it just a passion project or? Yeah, there's always something. I mean, for me, it's an, a, it's a passion, emotional connection. It's a contribution to the community. It's, uh, it's something that I feel like is really important. It's more than money. It's specifically more than money for me. And I'm very blessed to be able to afford to do something like that. Uh, it could be a charity. We also have a couple of charities that obviously don't make money, but, you know, uh, you know, we donate to them and we get donations from other people and do certain things. But uh, there, there, are, there are also examples of companies that are supposed to be for profit that they're not. And usually so that's it has huge. Or, I think people yeah. need to know that. I think that's the funny thing is that a lot of people will just be working in their business and not realize that they're one of those companies. And the fact that you know that it's one of those companies and you're okay with it, that's totally different than just sort of being under the covers and not noticing that at all. Really very freeing. I mean, when I first realized that and I was walking through creating the business model for this company, it it was it definitely required a lot of digestion for me to like think about, I'm going to design a business that doesn't make money. It's going <laughs> Wait, to have, what? It's going to have a greater purpose. And it was very freeing when I, when I realized, yeah, I can do that. I think it's amazing that you can do both, though. I think that's one really highlight. Um, some people that are listening right now sort of have to get the generating revenue companies up first before they can get the non-generating revenue company up second. But it's super cool to know that you can do that. The one last uh, tool that I want to ask you about, because we talked about this a little bit before, and I don't think a lot of people understand it, is a balance sheet. Why should someone know what a balance sheet is and what should they use it for? Yeah, it's definitely not as important as a P&L, but it's definitely important. And the difference between a P&L and a balance sheet, in my view, is short-term versus long-term. So a P&L is very good to look at uh, in the short-term of your business, where a balance sheet is more something that demonstrates the health of your business overall. And if you don't have good cash flow, the balance sheet doesn't matter. Because it doesn't. Because essentially, here's what a balance sheet is. A balance sheet is is a metric of your uh, of your assets versus your liabilities, and so it's kind of like those tipping scales. So you want you, you you need your business to be balanced, and that's why it's called a balance sheet. And so uh, you, you want your it's a measurement of what are all your assets and what are all of your liabilities in this bucket. And obviously, you want to have a lot more assets, but um, how do you how do you track those assets? And 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 I think the big thing is is that on the asset side. It's, it's not always liquid. A lot of companies carry a lot of assets that are not helpful on a short-term basis if they have cash flow issues. And so really the balance sheet is just a, it's a snapshot picture of where your business is at in terms of the, of the um, uh, assets and liabilities. Where a balance, uh, so that's a balance sheet. Where a profit and loss, so you always look at a balance sheet as, as a balancing scale like this. Where a profit and loss, I look at it uh, top and bottom to the bottom line. And so it's income, expenses, bottom line. Hmm. So a balance sheet, uh, everybody here should know what your net worth is. It's very similar to like your personal net worth. It's your assets minus your liabilities. Um, yeah. It's just funny how we always have different names for different things in different situations. So I know there's a ton of other questions that I have for you. So if you're cool that maybe we can do a part three to this then too, because I want to ask if, you know, when do you start paying yourself, especially looking at cash flow and, and how we deal with all that sort of thing. So you cool with that? All right, we'll do a part three. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll definitely have an action guide to sort of tell you a little bit more th about your profit and loss and give you a balance sheet so that way you can just fill it in. If Even if it looks really bad right now, that's okay because it's going to get better or it'll give you some really good advice and uh, you'll learn something brand new that maybe you don't have a business, <laughs> which would be key. Understanding it, not necessarily having it perfect right now. You, you mm -hmm. want to be able to understand it. Which is huge. Thank you so much, Jared. We'll definitely be back really soon for number three. Thanks. Sounds good. 
I hope you enjoyed that Millionaire Insider interview. Now, the cool thing is, is that every single one of these episodes for the next eight weeks will have an action guide associated with it. So you can actually take action and you better. So go to eventualmillionaire.com slash inside and you can download the workbook right now. You can also see every new Insider interview as it comes out. So again, it's eventualmillionaire.com slash inside.